Welcome to a new video. We learned a lot about React.js in the last couple of videos, at least I hope so. And there is one thing where we haven't really dived into deeper. And I'm not talking about Redux, that will be the next series I have upcoming on this channel. But I'm talking about routing. If we want to build a single page application with React.js, we need a router, right? Because then we want to handle all the page changes, all URLs entered by the user or created by clicking a link. We want to handle all these paths, all these routes with React.js and not with our server, right? Therefore, we need a router to be able to load pages depending on the URL. And React.js actually has a router or there is a router package available for React.js. It's called React Router. So in this video, the goal is to add this router and to implement basic navigation with the React Router. So let's start. In my workspace here, I will install the React Router and I do this by running npm install minus minus save and then the React Router, just like that. That will download the React Router and install it as a production dependency. Therefore, in the package.json file, we should see the React Router here. With that installed, you see, well, I get a couple of files already in this project. And of course, you can find the finished source code available in the video description. And yes, you would need to strip out all the router related code to be in the, well, same position as I am here right now. But basically all these files here are very, very simple and trivial. If we have a look at the index.js file, you see that I'm loading some root component and that I pass another component as a child to the root component. So let's have a look at the root component first. The root component is basically just a component which uses some bootstrap classes or the bootstrap grid and implements a header and then whatever I pass as a children or as a child, excuse me. So in this case, I'm passing the home component as a child. Therefore, the home component will be rendered in this place. Now, what is the home component? Well, that is a component which only says home uh, wrapped in a div. And the header component, which you can also see in the root component, well, the header component is a very basic bootstrap um, or a very basic navigation bar using bootstrap classes. So it has this nav element with some bootstrap classes and then it has two links which won't work as of now. And then finally, the user.js file, the user component here, that's a common component we're currently not using, but we will use it in, well, with route later on. Well, that only says the user page. And then I want to be able to output some parameters here, a parameter passed with the router. So that's just some basic setup for our basic routing video here. So let's start. The first step is to set up the router in the index.js file. So in the root component of our whole application in the app component in this case here. In order to use the React router here, I need to import it. I need to import some packages from it. Uh, let me just change this to be double quotation marks to stay consistent. So here I want to import React router. And then the question is, what do I want to import from the React router here, right? Well, I want to import the router and I will also need some routes and I will need a couple of other imports to which I'll come back soon. With these two imports added, what I can do is I can delete this code here for now and instead I want to return the router. And the cool thing about the React.js router is you can set it up just like these, this, just like, well, HTML elements or just like components. You could also set it up in a config file and write it in a kind of array way, but that I think is the most visual and well, easy way to create the routing. So I set up the router here and then between the opening and closing tag of the overall router, we define our routes just like that. Now that would be a route. 
Now the question is which routes should this application have and we could say that we want a user route and a home route and actually I can use a self-closing tag here. So let's create such a route and we do this by adding the path attribute to a route that says which URL do you want to handle with this route. And the URL I do want to handle and we use single curly braces for that is the let's say user that would be slash user at the end of your URL and then I duplicate this to also handle slash home let's say and yes you could leave uh, out the single curly braces here since we have a string but I like to stay well consistent here and always use them so with that, uh, we have two routes. One would be localhost 8080 slash user and one would be localhost 8080 slash home. Now we have the path, but we also need to tell the router what do you want to do whenever we reach this route. So what component should get loaded? And I want to load the user component in the case of the slash user route here. And therefore, of course, I also need to import user from components user here. And I want to load the home component here when navigating to the slash home path. So that's my basic setup with the two routes. And I will change this soon, but for now, that is, well, how it should look like. However, there is one other thing I wanna add the way the URL should look like. I just said that I want to have localhost 8080 and then slash user or slash home. That would be the URL style you know and you expect, which looks beautiful and so on. And that is the style we use nowadays. But a couple of years ago, and that sounds much longer than it actually is, so you still see it today a lot, you used to use this hashtag style which means you had a route like, let's say, um, yeah, localhost or example.com and then you had hashtag and then you had user, for example. And the hashtag here was important for front-end applications or for single-page applications because it told the server that the server should only handle this part of the URL and then the single page application, so your JavaScript code, would handle everything after the hashtag. Now why is that important? The reason why that is important is that what happens whenever you enter a route in your URL? Well, the server handles it first, right? Because the server is only, always gets the request first. That's just how the internet works. So if you had a route like that, example.com slash user, and your server doesn't have that route because most of the time it wouldn't as your front-end application should handle it, it would give you a 404 error, which means it doesn't work, don't find the route. Now, in more recent days, today, we have the HTML5 push state, which enables the browser to work with URLs like this and not send requests to the server if you're already in an application. But if you want to access such a route from outside of the ex uh, application, so which means you hard enter it into the URL bar and visit it, then you would still send the request to the server, which means your server needs to be configured in a way that it sends back the index.html file in a 404 error case, because that would then allow the front-end application to pick up on this route again and handle it. So why am I flooding you with all these strange explanations about URLs. The reason is because we have to decide which URL style we want to use on this router. We could use the hashtag style to, well, be able to use deep links or hard entered links in the URL with the hashtag and don't have to worry about sending the right error document. Or we could use the more beautiful style, which we want to see, and which is supported nowadays by browsers, but where we need to make sure that our server sends the index.html in a 404 error case. 
I will go with the latter approach and in order to tell the ReactJS router that our URLs will look like this with just a slash and no hashtag, I need to import browse history, browser history here. And then on my router, I set history equal to browser history. Now this name might str sound strange, but keep in mind, this is important for the browser and it basically tells the browser, or this is just a feature supported with HTML5 and by modern browsers, that the, well, that when we're inside of the app, which means we click a link, link in our app, the browser handles this correctly and stays in our app and doesn't reach out to the server. So therefore we tell the browser how to manage the history if you, the, the, the history of routes or of URLs if you want to see it like this. So long story short, we add this to get the beautiful localhost slash something URLs. And if I save this, the question is, what would we expect to see? I got my Webpack server running already. And if I go to my application, we see nothing. Now, if I load it, we see that the location slash did not match any routes. So we have to enter slash users, for example, right? Because that is, or slash user, excuse me, what we set up. But then we get the strange cannot get slash user here. Now, the reason for that is we get a 404 error, as you can see, that our browser, our server, excuse me, the Webpack dev server, is not configured to handle this style. It gives us a 404, 404 error and doesn't send us back the index.html in such a case. Remember, that's what I was just talking about. The server handles the request first and it needs to give us back our index.html to let our front-end application handle this route. So we have to tell Webpack that we want it to behave like this, or we have to tell the Webpack server that we want it to behave like that. We can tell it by going to the package.json and here where we, in the build step here, where we launch our server, I'm adding yet another configuration to it. It's called history API fallback. And this sounds strange, but it tells the Webpack dev server that we want to use this browser history, well, API. Remember history? That's also what we saw here, browser history. So with that, if I then relaunch my server with npm start and reload this page, we now see the user page. So that is exactly the component I have here. And if we enter slash home, well, then we see the home page. So notice that the header is gone, and I will come back to this in a second, but routing works, though only if we enter the URLs ourselves at the moment. And as I just said, the header disappears. So let's have a look at both issues or how we might fix that. I wanna start with the disappearing header. And the reason for this clearly is, well, if we have a look at our index.js, we have two routes, user and home. And that just means load this component. But our header is included in the root component, which is never loaded since no route leads to the root component. We have only routes to the home component and the user component. So what we need to do instead is we somehow need to load our root component and then have subroutes on that root component where we decide what should get entered here as children, right? So we need to adjust our routing therefore. And keep in mind that is just one example here. You can also have applications where you have something like, let's say, a slash route and then some other routes. But here, what I will do is I will change this to slash indeed, load the root component. If we save this and have a look and go to localhost, we see now we have the header again, but we're nothing loading, we're loading nothing down here because, well, we only load the root component. So I need to create some subroutes, which defines what should get loaded 
inside of this root component in this children place. And of course you can only have sub routes, so nested routes, if you have such a hook here where you can then render the sub routes or the components loaded for these sub routes. So in this case, to create sub routes, you simply change this from being a self-closing tag to have an opening and a closing tag. And then you nest the routes you want to nest inside here. So one route I want to have is, let's say, the user route here. So you could just say user. And that can be a self-closing tag again. And then here I want to load the user component. I'm duplicating this because I also want to load the home component, which would be home. And all these paths here, by the way, are appended to this path. So in this case, the path is only slash. So we will still only have slash user. But if we had slash root here, well then the path to this route here would be slash root slash user. And you could also leave out the leading slash here. But I only want to have the, well, root URL, just a slash after localhost, and then these two nested routes here. Now if I save this, go back to my application, and I enter slash user, not users, just user. Well, then we see we got the header and we got the user page now loaded in the place of this props children here. So if I even add a horizontal line to make this clearer, you see that this gets loaded in this place where we load the children. And that is what the React Router does automatically for us. It finds this hook and loads the component of the sub-route sub in this place. Notice I still get home here, which would indeed lead to some problems because if I enter home here, we load home in this place. So we never reach this route here, which would also have the same path of slash home. The reason for this is that we handle slash home here and the ordering does matter. So here if I had a route like home single to indicate that this will not use the root component, well then that would still work, but now the header is of course gone again. So with that we got all the routes set up here, but there are two things I need to change. I want to make these links working and what happens if we just navigate to slash? Well then no subroute is loaded. I want to load a default component, in this case some default route. Let's say if I navigate to localhost like this, I want to load the home component just like if I were to navigate to slash home. I'll take care about this problem first. In order to load such a default route, I add a new route to my slash route here and I need to import this actually. It's called index route, which means this is like an index page on our server where we always always load the index.html if we navigate to just slash or just the public folder. Well, this is the route which will always get loaded if we have no specific path after the slash in this case here or whatever our path of the root component here is. So I will create the index route here, self-closing tag. I don't need a path because again, the path will be this path. It's the default route. But I will need a component of course, and I want to load the home component as a default. With that in place, if I go back to just localhost, you see we now all to get the home component as we do if I go to slash home. And if I go to slash user, well then we load the user page. So that's all working fine. The missing thing of course is that it would be nice if these links here work and thereafter I also want to have a look at passing and using parameters. So that's what I'll have a look at next.